Hey everybody, pouring out the ice and snow this morning. Supposed to do that tomorrow. Just got a couple little pads we're doing today. Everything's frozen. Got some snow and rain yesterday. Below freezing right now. Uh, we're gonna try to get. We had that pack cover. We uncovered everything there. Got a little pad over there to do. Gonna try to get these done today. Hey guys, so we got these little pads to pour. It's a, it's a beautiful November morning here in Maine. Temperatures are well below freezing. I think they're in the mid 20s. Good thing they had everything covered up. They had uh, some, there's two inches of styrofoam too under that poly and wire. So that was really helping protect the dirt from freezing underneath there as well as those blankets on it. You can see all the ice and stuff that was on top of those blankets. We had a little bit of a freezing rain, kind of snowy day the day before. And they just left the blankets right on there to help keep it off the, the wire and the styro. We got here this morning, we had to pull all that stuff off. It was frozen down pretty good. But everything underneath it looked okay. We, uh, we're we also using 4,000 PSI concrete. We got hot water in the concrete. We got accelerator in the concrete. And we got, we put high range water reducer because we had we had quite a long pull. We got a 16 foot chute attached. That's right, that thing right there I'm pulling. That thing's 16 feet long to the truck chutes. So we had quite a bit of chute for the concrete to flow down. So we get, had to bump up the slump quite a bit. So we wouldn't kill ourselves. We couldn't get the conveyor today and these two pads are kind of small to get a pump truck. So we decided just to put a little high range in it. And that's not going to affect the set times at all. You'll see here a little bit later when I start finishing this that it's uh, still going to finish okay. That stuff really doesn't bother the finish at all. I'm not even sure why they put wire. We had fiber mesh in the concrete plus 4,000 PSI Crete inside a concrete wall like this. I mean, with good compaction, where's the concrete going to go? It's just the wire was kind of a waste in my opinion here. But we'll pull it up a little bit. Get it, get it up into the creek. Get quite a bit of pulling involved. We, the stone in this stuff is is a blend. It's like three quarter inch stone with a a little bit of three eight stone. So it's actually not a bad floor mix. And then when you add the extra cement to it for, with the four thousand psi, it finishes pretty nice by hand. I'm gonna finish these by hand today. They wanted them smooth. I think later on down the road we may come do some type of decorative thing on it, whether we do a decorative stamped overlay or a stain or, I don't know, maybe even an epoxy coat. And they weren't really sure what they wanted, so we decided we'd just hand trial them smooth. That's, you know, you get to see me, how I hand trial stuff anyway. I'll, I'll get a pretty good finish on it at the end. It's also hunting season here in Maine, deer hunting. There was a deer hunter out in the woods this morning when we got here. Probably kind of interrupted his day. <laughs> he probably didn't know we was coming today, but oh well. The mud was on the road, so we couldn't cancel. So Darren's, we're just, we're just magging the edges flush with the top of that wall. Then we can use that to screed off from. I got that chute out of there, and the concrete driver's going to wash it up for us while we're getting this screeded and bull floated there he is right there i guess he's already got it washed up he's pretty quick brian's pretty fast at everything that's me over there on the right screeding on the right i got my heated milwaukee jacket on i i don't know i get cold fast working 40, over 40 years out in Maine winters. I don't know, it doesn't take very much for me to get cold. As soon as temperatures start dropping into the 30s, 
I, I start getting cold pretty quick, especially my hands. But that heated jacket, you know, I'll put that on. It's got a little Milwaukee battery that, that hooks into it. You hit the on button and it really helps keep you warm. I'll have a link for that. If you guys want to check them out, you know, I was a little skeptical at first, but I really like it. I mean, I use it. I wear it all the time in the winter. I actually got two of them. I got this kind of like this sweatshirt one, and then I got the regular coat. When I use both of them together, that keeps that keeps me pretty toasty warm. <laughs> Tomorrow, tomorrow that what we're gonna pour tomorrow we we'll get the garage here scheduled for tomorrow. I don't know when they're gonna get the house pour already, but I'm sure it'll be soon. But the guys are laying the the radiant heat in the house. They got the styrofoam the wire down in there and they're putting the radiant heat in the, the garage floor so we can get that poured tomorrow. Otherwise we probably would have poured it today along with these two things. One good thing about this house versus a lot of them that we do is it's the floor is even with the top of the wall. It's not down inside an eight foot basement. This time of year, you know, we just prefer to pour a house on grades like this. It's just a little bit easier than jumping down into a basement, climbing up and down a ladder. If you do have any sun this time type of year, if the sun gets, you know, if the trees aren't blocking the sun, at least the concrete gets a little bit of sun on it, which helps set it up a little bit quicker for us. Versus a basement, you know, you always have the tall wall that shades one side. So one side gets in the sun, one side gets in the shade, the thing doesn't dry very good. We definitely had plenty of mud. Didn't want to didn't want to run out on two little small things like this. We're about 35 40 minutes from the concrete plant, so that would have been a bummer. We're a sub on this job. Most a lot of the jobs we're on were subs, you know. We do get we do get out calls for our own jobs a lot, but we have so many contractors that we work for on a regular basis that we end up being subs like this on this job so there's a there's an excavation contractor on this job there's a foundation contractor that's those are the guys we're working for there's a there's a plumber and a heating guy those are both the same contractor so i mean it's just a bunch of different subs and the general contractor is actually the homeowner on this job so he's He's hiring all these guys individually and setting up schedules and all that, trying to keep everything just slowly going. Trying to go real slow with the bull throat to close up the surface really nice. That way, when I do get on it, to, to finish it by hand you know the surface is already pretty darn smooth I don't want any aggregate showing or any holes or anything like that I just want a nice smooth bull voltage bull floated surface all right so here I am this was about this was about an hour and a half later, so I got to I got to hang out just for a bit. Luke and Darren went and did. They're working on another job, doing an epoxy coating. I told them I could handle this all right by myself. I, think, I thought I had enough experience. <laughs> it doesn't have to be power trialed. We don't usually power trial stuff this small. It's just we can finish just as smooth by hand than we can with a power trial. It's just a little bit of a process. That's all. What do you think is going to go first on me, my shoulders or my knees? 
Right now, right now everything's okay. It doesn't feel too, too bad, although I did have a little bit of trouble with my left shoulder. Um, I thought I might need rotator cuff surgery, but I, it came out of it with a little bit of therapy and, you know, exercise, working out. I, I usually always work out. I've lifted weights. I've lifted weights since probably my junior year in high school. I try to just stay in shape. But I did have a little left shoulder problem there a couple years ago where it stiffened right up. And I went to a chiropractor. The chiropractor really helped me a lot. And then I continued with the therapy myself to keep stretching and strengthening it. But my, right now my knees, my knees feel okay. My shoulders feel good. My hips feel good. But I've been doing it 42 years. So let me know down in the comments what part you think is going to go first on me. Hopefully none of them do. But I think at some point, everything has its breaking point. Alright, so we're going to go from that one back to the other one. I kept pretty, I kept pretty busy after, after this stuff started to go, but you know, from one to the other. I had a few minutes in between hits. I think I hit these a total of three or four times a piece to get it to the smoothness I wanted to get it at. Luckily with this one, I didn't have to use my knee boards, but I did have to kneel on that concrete wall, which didn't help my knees any. I do have knee pads. I, I should have just busted out my knee pads, I guess. Those are insulated pants, though, so that was good. They're a little thicker than normal. It, it didn't really bother my knees too bad unless I knee, kneeled down on a rock or something. But The Crete seemed to smooth out pretty nice. It wasn't... It wasn't too, too sticky. Sometimes it'll kind of want to stick to the bottom of your trowel as you get going here. And this stuff didn't give me too many problems. I just had to, I had to let it set up enough in between hits so it would look a little bit smoother each time I hit it. Another, another thing we'll have trouble with sometimes is when we use these skids as the concrete sets up gets firmer on top a little you know little pieces will want to stick to the bottom of the skids as you slide them and you'll end up pulling up like little chunks like maybe the size of a dime or a nickel or a quarter and then you gotta you know almost work as hard to fill in those little pieces as you move backwards as you do to trial the floor but this one this one didn't do it at all on any of the hits so that made finishing it a little bit easier maybe Maybe because it wasn't curing up too fast, it was pretty cold out. The ice and the snow and the stuff you see didn't really melt very fast, or some of it didn't melt at all during the day. So even with the sun out, it wasn't a very good melting day at all. So that's my second pass with the hand trowel. So I mag floated it, let it sit, hand troweled it, let it sit, second troweled it. Now I'm going to let it sit again. I'm going to come up and buzz this this front one out. This will be the second hand trial on this one. I'm going to give it a few more minutes and then and then it's probably around 11, 11:30 in the morning right now. We got here. Mud showed up about 7:30. So for a day where we showed up in the 20s, it's it's curing up pretty good. You can see those guys over there in the garage laying the radiant heat. <laughs> they got their hoodies on too. It's still pretty chilly out. Look at all that snow and stuff in front of the garage. November is usually, like this is mid-November. This is usually when we start getting some snow. We don't typically get much snow before November. Usually never in October. But we've had, you know, storms as early as the first week of November before. And then we've also had days on Thanksgiving where it's 70 degrees, you know, it's t-shirt weather on Thanksgiving. But it seems to be getting a little chilly right now. This is the week before Thanksgiving. And it was definitely chilly today. Tomorrow when we, you know, when we scheduled to do the garage, it's going to be 30 in the morning with a high of like 42, so... It'll be cold, but that'll cure up okay. So this is going to be my last hit. It's getting things are getting pretty smooth now. Let me know what you think. You know, is that 
smooth enough finish to do, you know, basically any type of flooring if they do change their mind want to put flooring over it. Or if they just want to stain the concrete. You know, I'm going to get it pretty smooth just in case they want to do that even though I'm not a big fan of staining. A lot of people like it. And if we want to do an epoxy coating over something like this, well, we got to grind it anyway, so that's that's not going to be a big deal. I'll have to grind the surface. And then if we do a thin overlay, like a 3-8 stamped overlay, then part of the prep for that is grinding the concrete too. So we grind it, put down a primer, and then you know we put down the overlay and stamp it. So that the smoothness on that really, it's it's probably good enough the way it is right now. I don't even need to hit it this time if we're going to do something like that. So. Anyway, we left all options on the table, so I told him I'd, I'd get it pretty good. This is usually when you'll pick up a pretty good chunk right here is when you go to get off these things, these skids. And take them off the concrete. If you don't slide them as you take them off, if you just lift them straight up, you're going to pick up a big chunk. So the key is just to slide them a little bit, pick them up as you slide them. And you'll see here in a second, I still left a little bit of a kind of a scar, I guess if you want to call it. Not really, I didn't really lift out a chunk, but you see that little thing up in there. But that wiped out pretty easy. So I go from doing the middle... And then I'll just buzz my edges real quick one more time, making sure them all look good. Then I'm gonna go back and hit this front piece. This front, the front piece actually felt a little, a little firmer on top than the back piece did. Not much, but just a little bit. Yeah, try not to leave any ripples or rough spots. Then I'm going to give this front piece one last pass, just a quick one, just to buzz out any little fuzz or any little uh, rough looking spots. It's going to smooth it right out. And then that'll be the finished surface right there, at least for the winter until springtime. They'll cover these back over with the blankets tonight, keep them protected. That way the concrete doesn't freeze. If you just leave them like this and the, and the temperatures get below freezing, there's a really good chance that top eighth inch of concrete will freeze. And I mean, you may you may not notice any damage for a little while until things warm up, but eventually that, that frozen top eighth inch will stop peeling off and popping and just make a mess. So you gotta figure out a way to, you gotta figure out a way to keep it from freezing. And usually those blankets work pretty good. Well, that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.